Hey everybody, News Now Wyoming here. We're going to talk today about curtilage and searching of the home. I'm going to bring in a, a story and about something that happened in about September of uh, 2020. I, I think it was about September, maybe a little earlier. So curtilage, what is curtilage? Can, I am going to use Wikipedia here. They've got a lot of good sources that they use to represent what they are saying. Curtilage of a house is land immediately surrounding it, including any closely associated buildings and structures, but including any associated open fields beyond, and also excluding any closely associated, closely associated building structures or divisions that contain the separate intimate activities of their own respective occupants with those occupying residents. So, uh, my rights... Would, my brother lives on my uh, property in a trailer. If the cops broke into his trailer to search it without a warrant, they would not be violating my rights, they would be violating his rights. And along the same lines, I cannot give them permission to search his home because he is a legal occupant of his trailer. Uh, delineates the boundary within which a homeowner can have a reasonable expectation of privacy and where intimate home activities take place. Uh, it is an important legal con concept in certain jurisdictions for the understanding of search and sh searches and seizures, uh, self-defense and land use planning. So we're going to go right down here to the Fourth Amendment. In United States versus Dunn, 1987, the court provided guidance saying that curtilage questions should be resolved with particular reference to four factors. The proximity of the area claimed to be curtilage to the home, whether the area is included within an enclosure surrounding the home, the nature of the uses to which the area is put, and the steps taken by the resident to protect the area from observation by people passing by. In Jar uh, Florida versus in Jardines, I'll just refer to it as Jardines, may not be used by a police dog to sniff for marijuana. The, immediately, uh, the area immediately surrounding and associated with the home is part, is part of the home itself for the Fourth Amendment purposes. That principle has ancient and durable roots, such as the distinction between the home and open fields as old as the common law. So too is the identity of home and what Blackstone called the curtilage or home stall, for the house protects and privileges all its branches and uh, appurtenances. Uh, this area around the home is intimately linked to the home, both physically and psychologically, and where is where privacy expectations are most heightened. So it's not that you don't have an expectation of privacy out in your field. It's not just to the same level as it would be in your home. Distance. The distance of a barn being 60 yards from the home and 50 yards outside the fence suggested it was outside the home's curtilage. I think that's more to do with uh, the fence. Jardines, the court found that a porch right in front of a house is part of the curtilage. Enclosure by a fence. The, although the area was surrounded by a fence, the home was surrounded by a different fence, and that fence was obviously intended to demark a specific area of land immediately adjacent to the house that is readily identifiable as part and parcel to the house. Nature of use. Uh, they had evidence that it was being, uh, it was not used for the intimate activities of the home, namely that it was being used to store large amounts of drugs and that it had very, very strong smell. In Jardines, the court specifically named a front porch as a prime example of curtilage. Even the Girl Scouts or salespersons can knock on the house they must leave immediately if there is no answer. Protection from observation. The area was not protected at all from observation from those standing in open fields, although agents did peer into a barn that was arguably protected by the Fourth Amendment. Any such, such observation from open fields was not protected. This is the plain view doctrine, though it's not labeled as such in, the, in Dunn. In uh, Jardines, the court noted, that the police can stop a person on an open highway, they are prohibited from peering into the homes of a pri uh, into the windows of a private home from the front porch, absent probable cause. So they uh, 
arguably could not look in your side windows, but if your door window uh, that you were knocking on uh, or had a window, you could arguably peer, peek through that. Um, so it protects your home and the curtilage of your home from unreasonable searches without a warrant. Uh, your curtilage is afforded less protection than a home. Absent no trespassing signs or fences with locked gates, it is considered reasonable for a person, including a police officer, to walk from a public area to the obvious main entrance to the home using the most obvious path in order to knock and talk with the resident. But otherwise, government agents need consent, a warrant, or probable cause to enter a home's curtilage. So they can come up to your front porch to knock on your door but they cannot search your uh, front porch. So, uh, let's just go right into the summer. So the summer, uh, or again, September, I think, so I guess this fall time frame, a deputy chased a loose horse onto my property. I did not know about this. My dog started freaking out because he heard the officer uh, driving. So my front gate is over here. Uh, here's a fence. Here's a fence. And the fence goes all the way up and around to behind my barn and along this side. My gate was open at the time. It was not locked. It was not secured. Uh, normally, my gate is not closed or secured. Uh, it's just too much of a pain in the butt, and really, I don't care to. I mean, I don't need a need. I don't have to see a need to. But there is a gate, but it was open, so the gate does not fall into. Can he enter my property? Can he chase a loose horse that he uh, chased down the, from down the road here? onto my property and then enter my property. Would that be an exigent circumstance? I could see the argument being made, yes. What he did was he, uh, my horse was in the side pasture over here. Uh, this is also my property over here. It plays no part in this. Uh, here I've got some horse corrals and this round pin that is showing, I have installed a new round pin Probably not as big as this one. Again, not that important for the storytelling here, but this barn falls within the same fence line. So would it fall under that done principle of it being 60, uh, over 60 yards? I don't know uh, for, for, the, for what we are discussing here. Would, would my barn, Again, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard to discern. He pulled his car, his uh, police vehicle, and he was parked about right where this truck and trailer is parked. So he was about here. Again, my dog was freaking out. So I went to take him outside uh, in my backyard here, which is also fully fenced by a seven-foot fence. So my backyard and my porch, or my garage here, would clearly be within the uh, curtilage of my home. My brother's trailer is here. So, the cop being back here, is that within the curtilage of my home? Mm, it's arguable. Did he have exigent circumstances? The time I saw him and went out there to find out what he was doing, the horse was over here. Uh, talking to my horse. Now, I did not ask the officer to leave. We shared the same goals. I did not want a loose horse on my property either. He did not want a loose horse on my property, and I did not want the horse there either. So we shared the same goals at this time. Uh, could I have asked him to leave and it been a legal request? Again, is a loose horse an exigent circumstance? Let's look at the definition.
In the criminal procedure context, exigent circumstance means the following. An emergency situation requiring swift action to prevent imminent danger to life or serious damage to property or to forestall the imminent escape of a suspect or destruction of evidence. So would a loose horse fall under that? No, uh, I would argue with you that it does not fall into that. So, uh, would I have been okay to ask him to leave? I believe, uh, following the full extent of the law, that I would have. But again, we shared the same goal. So, what ended up happening was, uh, I approached the horse with some snacks, and it was a very, very skittish horse, clearly not touched very much by its owners. Anywhere my horse went along this pasture, uh, she went with her. So uh, up and down this livestock board was called, and we managed to uh, get her into my horse's stall up here. And so she spent the rest of the day in the uh, stall here until I could get a hold of the owner. I posted on social media. Uh, the officer left as soon as his reasons for being there, a loose horse, were taken care of. He didn't try to do anything. He didn't say anything. Uh, the livestock board members said, hey, if you don't get a call tomorrow, give me a call and I will uh, come out here with the trailer and bring the horse in and we'll figure out whose horse it is at that point. So, could I have asked him to leave? under the exigent circumstances? I think so. Uh, let's go to a red. Because he had to drive front down my fence here and through behind my garage to park where he was at. He had exigent circumstances to be on my property. No danger to life, property, uh, just a loose horse, right? Now there's a time to be a jerk to a cop and a time not to. When he shared the same goal as that cop, it was probably not a time. He did not ask me who I was. He, uh, I went out, I was actually wearing pajamas. I'm working from home and so I wear, I sh wear shirts on top. And then I, uh, after I get out of the shower, I hop right back into pajamas. So I was wearing pajamas that day. He saw that. Likely it's my house. So. Uh, but that is what the curtilage is. So the question would be, if he was back here and he looked in my garage and he saw something, would that be admissible in court? That is harder to decide. What is the more important factor, uh, most important of the factors in curtilage of the home? My barn is not an extension of my house. It holds animals. At the time it had pigs in it and it had my horse and barn cats. And it had all the food to support those animals and all the equipment to support those animals. So it's not a extension of the home. So that weighs against me. Now let's go back to the factors, the four factors. Distance, 60 yards. We don't know how important the distance is. My house arguably is about 150 feet from my house. Or the barn is 150 feet from the house. So uh, would that weigh in my favor or against it? Again, in this case, it is within the fence line that circles my house. So enclosure by fence. This one weighs heavily in my favor. Distance, we aren't sure. 60 yards, is that the minute, or is that, is 60 yards a, a low number? Or, or are they just saying, because it was outside the fence that it didn't actually fall in? They provide no guidance for that. The nature of the use, again, this fall goes against me. Uh, because I don't live in it. 
I do work in it, yes, I do uh, horse type of work in it, right? Or pig type of work, or I'm building fence, I'm cutting wood in there during bad weather. Uh, I use it as a workshop as well as a uh, barn. Uh, it is a very gigantic barn, so it's really nice. But it, no intimate activities um, by us. So probably weigh against me strongly. Protection from observation. It does have doors on uh, the main doors that are always shut. And so the only view you would have from outside of it would be... Uh, I would argue you would have to be in the curtilage to view inside of it be, and uh, where those are at. Uh, let's go back to the photo. I've got open doorways there where the animal stalls are at, right? So you could see in through there kind of from out here. But again, would this fall into the curtilage? It would be arguable. If you were in this open field, which is less arguable, or this open field, which is less arguable, or my arena, which is back here, you wouldn't be able to see much at all. This one, you probably would. But you wouldn't be able to, you could see into the stalls themselves, but no further than that. This one, you wouldn't be able to see at all. And here I've got full, this is fully walled in. So back here you wouldn't be able to see anything from the riding arena. So it's interesting. It's uh, fun to talk about. I, I like hypotheticals more than I do reality. Like I said, I had no need to ask him to leave because we shared the same goal. I didn't want a loose horse on my property. I could have help chase the horse off of my property, I would have been completely legal to do so. But if my horse got loose, I would want some a neighbor to do the same for me and help capture it and keep it safe. So uh, that is why I assisted the cop with capturing the horse and putting it in a safe spot. See so guys, thank you very much. What do you think? Curtilage of the home. Where does where does it reach? How far? Is there a distance from the house? Would, would this be fair? Or do you think the fence itself delineating the different areas of my property are a more important factor to figure out what I intend to keep private from the government? And I don't have a no trespassing sign on my gate. My house is very open to people. I don't like people and nobody comes. But it is open to that. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you again for joining. Have a great night.